Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back in the Queen Elizabeth on the path to the Vanguard. This, as you guys know, my favorite ship in this line. It is literally one of, if not the best, tier 5 battleship in the game. Okay, so with that being said, let's look at our commander. As you guys should know by now, we are running Azure Lane Nelson Commander. We have Azure Lane Scharnhorst and Charles Madden as our inspiration. We are running Flamble Cannoneer, Gyrating Drill Bits, Marksmanship, Master Mechanic, and Fight Fire with Fire as our perks. Alright, let's look at the loadout. We are running Aiming Systems Mod 1, and we are running Steering Gears Mod 2. We are fully upgraded, and as you can see, we are running the Spotter Plane as well as the five heels that we get with this. And we are running Community Contributor Flag with a permanent camo that I have set up for this, which is a Type 3 camo that is permanent. Um, I use this ship so often in, like, ranked battles and stuff, so I have went ahead and made a permanent camo specifically for this ship. Uh, and I recommend anybody who actually uses, uh, whether it be your top-tier ships especially, or any ships that you play a lot of, Go ahead and make a permanent camo for them if you don't have a permanent camo because it will save you a lot of camos over time and they will make you your camos back. Okay, so stats. Survivability, 55,300 hit points with a 22% torpedo damage reduction. Artillery, 381 millimeter 42 caliber Mark 1s that you have 8 of and they reach out to 17 kilometers. They reload in 29.1 seconds with this build. 180 degree turn time is 38.8 seconds. Um, trying to think of where, when my uh, reload time got slower. I'm betting it's because I'm running uh, Azure Lane Nelson rather than uh, our commander for, uh, oh, what's his name? Cunningham. But, uh, or Madden. I used to run just Madden. Uh, so you could run Palo de Rebel. So yeah, I think that's what it is. But you, I used to have a 25 second reload on this thing, uh, but currently it's just 29.1, which I believe is the same as the Bayern. Okay. Uh, maximum HE shell damage of 6,300 with a 35% chance to set fires. AP shell maximum damage is 12,540. And secondaries, you have 114 millimeter 45 calibers. You have 20 of those that reach out to 4.2 kilometers and reload every five seconds. Uh, maximum HE shell damage is 1,700 with an 8% chance to set fire. AA is actually pretty good for tier five. You've got 20 millimeter Orlikans or Erlikans, uh Mark IVs that you have 14 of that do 50 damage per second and reach out to two kilometers. Then you have, those are the Mark IVs. Then you have the 20 millimeter Orlikan or Orlikan Mark Fives that you have eight of that do 24 damage per second and reach out to two kilometers. Then you have the 40 millimeter Vickers two pounder that you have 32 of that do 79 damage per second and reach out to two and a half kilometers. And then you have 114 millimeter 45 caliber Mark II secondaries that are dual purpose that you have 20 of that do 89 damage per second and reach out to five kilometers. Maneuverability. 21.2 knots of top speed with this build. Uh, you can have that a little bit faster if you take off the gyrating drill bits. Okay. Uh, turning circle radius of 680 meters and rudder shift time of just 12.2 seconds, meaning this is a very good turning ship. Again, dreadnought shuffle is in your favor. Uh, this and American battleships, very, very good at turning battles. Uh, concealment. Detectability by sea is 13.6. Uh, detectability after firing main guns. Uh, we didn't care about that. Detectability by air is 11.4. Two is always guaranteed. And then the detectability while firing in smoke is 13.1 kilometers. Let's look at the armor on her. Again, you have the same issue that you've had the entire way, which you have 25 millimeters of bow armor, meaning you need at least 15 inch guns to go through it, right? Uh, let me double check real quick. Let me just double check the math. So you have 25 times 14.3. It gives us 357.5 millimeter guns. So yeah, you need 15 inch guns to go through it. Uh, I'm trying to think of a ship that might have slightly larger 14 caliber guns. 
or 14 inch guns but I can't think of any. Most 14 inch guns are like 356 millimeters. So that's why I say you need at least 15 inch guns to go through the bow of a 25 millimeter ship. Okay. Uh, you still have a little bit of a uh, torpedo bulge that comes all the way up to the, the bow. Uh, so you can actually angle slightly and, and not have as much trouble, but it's not as thick as it was. Uh, if we take that off, actually, Let's see if we can go through it. You can see there is four end armor belt there as well. So you've got the belt going all the way up almost to the bow, and then you've got the torpedo bulge above that. Meaning if you angle this thing pretty well, like you're not gonna, have, it's very tanky. If you over angle, they go through and they hurt you real bad. But, but if you angle cor uh, correctly in this thing, it is very tanky, very tanky. All right, so let's get rid of all the other armor and take a look at well, there's our deck armor. Might as well look at that. 25 millimeters of deck plating. So you gotta love that. Uh, that might mean some, something to somebody, but for me, it doesn't really matter. Now here, you can see that uh, the queen does have a citadel that's right at or slightly above the waterline. So you gotta keep that in mind. Also, you can see that uh, part of the citadel reaches up higher than the rest. Uh, and that part gets you citadeled when you over angle right here, which is why I say you've got to be careful. Uh, I've, I've taken many citadels, much like the America Dreadnoughts, through this cheek if you over angle. If people can pin this cheek, it's going to hurt. Uh, they can and will citadel you through it. It's happened many a times to me. I love this ship. Uh, but that being said, let's look at our, our overview, shall we? Superior HE shell penetration, which is what we've already talked about. It's British. It's got more. It's got better HE penetration than most nations. Again, I think, I think the uh, calculation is instead of dividing the caliber by six, you divide it by four, and that's why it has better penetration. Uh, sure shot shells with a good ballistic trajectory, maintaining velocity, making a aiming easier. This is something that you'll notice pretty well. These these shells get to the target pretty quickly, and they are a pretty flat trajectory. Agile, above average ability to change direction, which is something we already talked about as well. It's a very good turning ship, especially with the uh, steering gear uh, mod on it. It's very, very good. Queen Elizabeth, the first battleship in the world to carry 381 millimeter main battery guns. When commissioned, she was one of the fastest ships of her type. In the interwar period, the battleship was extensively upgraded. Her torpedo protection was reinforced and her outdated secondary battery was replaced with up-to-date dual-purpose artillery. The ship also received aircraft handling equipment. In other words, anti-aircraft. Entered service in 1915, there were five of them in the series, including the most decorated British battleship, or maybe most decorated battleship in the world, the Warspite. So, uh, yeah, pretty prominent class. So, uh, let's take a look at it. I love this camo on this ship for some reason. I don't know why, but I love this ship. There's nothing wrong with this ship at all. If you like battleships, you love the Queen Elizabeth. It is fantastic, and some would say overpowered for its tier. So, with that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we're going to be on Haven, and we are in the Queen Elizabeth. And we got a doozy for you, folks. It's going to be a fun one, so hopefully you're ready. Queen Elizabeth, one of the most dominant battleships at its tier. If not the best battleship at its tier. Personally, it's probably my favorite battleship at this tier. But it's very close between it and the Arizona. Um, so, with that being said, I mean, it's very, very close. I love the Arizona. I love this battleship. They are both tanky. They are both nasty. They are snipers. They are up-close brawlers. They do everything you need them to do. I love both of them. Uh, but... It's just something about this ship that just makes me, like, love it even more. I don't know why. It just seems like it's always more accurate. It's got the ability to overmatch because it's got 15-inch guns. 15-inch guns at Tier 5. Most of the ships, uh, most of the battleships at Tier 5 have 25-millimeter bows, which means you can punch right through them, uh, including the Queen Elizabeth. Uh, the exception is the Bayern and uh, possibly the Russian. The Russians have uh, pretty thick frontal armor as well. Uh, at least until you get to the Synop, in which case the Russian Synop gets overmatched by 16-inch guns and can be citadeled right through the front. 
But uh, we've got a Fuso out here sailing broadside right off the bat. Look at this accuracy, man. This is what I'm talking about. This is at 14 kilometers when we fire these shells, and we hit almost all of them. We hit six out of eight shells at most of your range. Okay, we only can fire out to 17 kilometers. Okay, and if you thought it was a fluke, don't worry. That was 17,000 damage in a single salvo. Now, obviously, he's he's broadside, and you're probably thinking, well, Spartan, he's broadside. Of course you're going to hit him hard. Uh, now he's angled out slightly. We're going to take the shot again and see what we end up with this time. Look at this railguns, man. People wonder why I like this ship so much. Wait for it. Yep, another 13,000 damage. Uh, so in the first two salvos, we've scored 30,000 damage, and we have averaged... 15,000 damage a salvo. Not too shabby. <laughs> he returns fire and does basically nothing to us because Japanese RNG on the battleships, uh, not preferable. And uh, he just maybe didn't aim as well. But uh, here we're going to get one of those shots that you dream of. We take the shot again, 13 kilometers. These are going to be coming in at an angle. This is plunging fire. And he stops and eats it right in the citadel giving us another 15,000 damage. We are averaging over 15,000 damage per salvo right now. And you wonder why I like this ship. It's disgusting. And the best part is, if you think this is a fluke because this guy is just sitting out here broadside, while it does help, go bow tank me and see how that turns out for you as well. I'll still be hitting your superstructure and stuff and down into your deck for uh, 15,000 damage or close to it. Okay, the first shot's definitely going to be 15,000 damage-ish. And then the follow-up shots, if your damage or if your superstructure is saturated, will maybe hit you for 10 to 12,000 damage a salvo. So, uh, yeah, the Queen Elizabeth is just incredibly powerful for its tier. But we're going to push over to the right side. We've got this Fabuki and this Hawkins here who have decided that their one goal in life is to hug one another and hope for the best. Uh, let me know how that works out for you, fellas. Uh, you'll see just how incredibly like broken that strategy is in a few moments when this uh, enemy Minakazi decides to just run up on them. Remember, that is a Fabuki, which gets dual uh, turrets. Like it, it gets dual gun turrets, which is the first ship in the line for the uh, torpedo boats on the Japanese to get the dual turrets, which are fantastic, by the way, even though they have a long reload time. Uh, this these guys are going to get absolutely smashed a hawkins a british heavy cruiser which could like two shot this minikaze if he gets a couple good salvos it's gonna get smashed so uh yeah i don't know what they're doing to be real uh, minikaze is gonna charge him down unfortunately i don't have a shot to help them uh, i started loading the he here because i was preparing for a fight with this nevni i figured the nevni was going to push me but he's sitting in a smoke screen he's going to be shooting at the uh, friendlies over there and he's actually going to fire his guns watch this next shot he fires his guns i didn't really see it so i'm like uh oh, maybe it's over here there you go you see him shoot i fire how is that even close like seriously i'm firing at the tracers that he just fired do the shots not get tracers for the first hundred yards like seriously we weren't even close but uh yeah that that just goes to show you firing into the smoke at, at tracers unless you know they're broadside to you not the easiest thing to do uh, especially if you didn't see them go dark in the first place so uh we were way off little rodney dangerfield now hawkins goes down they killed the minikaze but the hawkins goes down to the minikaze which is hilarious um and then we're going to pull out here, and again, we are not shooting because we are waiting for our attack on the uh, Nevni. Now, I've come to the realization at this point that I should have been shooting. Uh, if I had been, probably could have ended up uh, changing the way this game ended. Um, but, there's only so much we can do. We do finally get our shot. He's broadside on. He does speed up just in time to avoid getting death struck. Like, that man put that thing in gear just in time to avoid getting death struck. We aim a little further forward. That's a death strike every time. British high explosive versus destroyers, nasty. Especially when you get accurate broadsides uh, at destroyers. But we're going to go ahead and send another salvo of HE at this Nevni. Uh, he does turn out, unfortunately. 
but uh, we're expecting him to turn a little bit. He does actually turn, and we catch him with two more rounds and, again, take almost all of his health away, uh, leaving him with just enough to hopefully get finished off by either the battleship or the destroyer um, in the process. Now, here is where I make a mistake. Our New York is about to go down. Our destroyer is going to finish off this Nevni, and then I think our destroyer dies to their battleship uh, that he just torpedoed. Uh, he did just do torpedo the New Mexico, but he goes down. Oh, Hotnik goes down to the New Mexico. Here's my mistake. I knew the New Mexico was here. I knew the Nevada was here, and I knew the Fuso was here. So I'm going to make the right choice of not engaging right away because I want to make sure that I limit who can shoot me. New Mexico has put himself out front. I did notice that he doesn't have a lot of health. He did get torpedoed. So I'm going to try to put myself in position where I can shoot him <clears throat> and take minimal damage back. Okay? Um, and it's been a while since we've been spotted. And fun fact, New Mexico doesn't even know we exist. Like, this guy has not paid attention to the map. He's not rotating his guns. He's not looking at us. We take the first shot. It actually passes through the island. Uh, so we didn't quite have the shot, even though the game, I don't think, told us that we didn't have a shot. Maybe I, maybe it did, and I just didn't notice. But uh, not going to have a problem with the rear guns. We're going to be able to get those off and uh, put, a smack, or put, a, put a nice little hit on them. One penetration for 4,000 damage, leaving him with just enough for us to hopefully finish on this shot. Because we want him to go down before he gets uh, the will to rebuild going. Okay? And here we get another good shot, but again, only two penetrations, one full penetration, one over penetration, leaving him again with just enough to get away. But it doesn't matter. He finally starts turning towards us, trying to get his guns to bear, but we're not going to care about that because we overmatch him and he goes down. Now, I make the mistake here of trying to go straight for the base, okay? Um... I know the Nevada's there. I know the Fuso's out there. I know the Arizona's out there. There's a, there's a cruiser out here somewhere as well. Uh, but I make this mistake of going for the, uh, the base to try to keep the lead in our, or try to get the lead in our favor. Our team was losing handily, right? It was three versus uh, six. Uh, that's, that's a two to one in advantage of the team, the enemy team. But uh, in a moment, you're going to see I'm going to pop my spotter plane to try to find out where exactly this Nevada is. And unfortunately, I'm going to make the wrong choice here. Nevada is spotted here. And there's a couple of things that I could have done differently. Uh, I turned straight in and, and tried to uh, run aground and bounce off. I'm already in reverse. And you can see we do get a little bit of a bounce off of the island. Uh, he is going to shoot down our plane, which doesn't I don't care about that. Uh, because at the end of the day, the whole pur purpose was to spot him with that. Uh, he goes through our armor a little bit. We're going to return the favor much harder. We hit him for 12k right there through the bow. Uh, and you can see he has no intentions of being in a fight with us right now. Now remember, he has Arizona and Texas guns on his Nevada, right? He's got very good guns. Uh, but we're going to keep punching straight through his bow, and he's just coming in here to ram me. I have all my hit points. I've done a remarkable job up to this point of... Not only being effective as, as a battleship, but also keeping my hit points for these fights late in the game. Unfortunately, it's not going to matter. He's going to knock out one of my guns. And I'm not going to be able to get the rear swung around because the island behind me actually stops me. Just short of being able to, to shoot him with the rear guns. And this man's going to be able to run a, uh, ram me and finish me off. Now, he almost screws up. I start bouncing off the island. I'm going forward. If I had propulsion mod, maybe it's okay. Maybe we get away with it, but no. He ends up killing us. We end up with 124,000 damage in a second kill. Uh, we've left everybody, like, uh, the, the last remaining ship that hasn't been spotted for a while is the Fuso. We know he has no health. Our Tennessee managed to take him out. Now, you may notice I started talking in chat. What did I say in chat? Well, I said, if you guys lose this freaking match... I'm going to lose my freaking mind. Like, seriously. Uh, but then I notice Tennessee's health is fine, and he's going to be able to easily hold on to the lead. Uh, we know the Fuso has no health, and of course you see the other guy chiming in. Uh, this man, he said, It's just a game, bro. 
Really? <laughs> really? So, uh, yeah. I love people that say that. Like, it's, it's just a game, man. Why are you so serious? So, uh, my reply to him was, spoken like a true person at the bottom of the leaderboard. And, uh, fun fact, that's exactly where he ends up. It's almost like you can tell these things. But, I get it. Like, I, the worst part is, it wasn't even like I was a jerk about it. Like I just said, if you guys lose this, I'm going to lose my mind. That's it. What's so bad about that? It was just a game, bro. Like, shut up. <laughs> if you don't want to play the game, don't play. Like, if, if, I, I, I don't understand why everybody that comes in and that is casual player has to, like, tell everybody that they're a casual player. Like, I don't care. If you want to play the game for fun, fine. Is it really fun being at the bottom of the leaderboard all the time because you're not, like, learning from your mistakes? Like this. I pointed out my mistakes. Next time I get into a situation like that, I'll play it better. Okay? It's just learning. That, that's what the game is about. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to be awful when you first start out. Okay? That's just the way it is. Especially those of you who are just starting out now when you have a player base that has a two-year head start on you. Okay? So... You're going to be bad when you first start. Unless, of course, you come from PC and you've been playing for years. But the main thing is to learn from your mistakes. Start learning other ships. And this is why I'm a proponent for playing everything. Okay, I used to be a battleship main. You guys know this. But then I started playing everything. Just like I did in World of Tanks. Uh, because I learned in World of Tanks that once I started playing other classes, it gave me a huge advantage in the ships or in the tanks that I actually play. Uh, or like to play, like the big tanks, uh, or the uh, artillery, um, and then the eventually light tanks. I love playing light tanks. It was a lot of fun. But, uh, yeah, it gives you such an advantage to know the weaknesses of your enemy and know the capabilities of your ship. Uh, so try to learn from your mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. It sucks. We all do it. I still make mistakes. As you just saw, I got rammed with full health did a great job of protecting my hit points the entire game while still doing a lot of damage and end up throwing it away because I get ramped. And there were outs. I could have continued into the center of the map. Yes, he would have hit me hard initially, but I should have been able to avoid the ram and then I would have been able to kite and turn and get into a fight with him and we would have been fine. Uh, we would have survived and we would have been able to kill the Fuso because, uh, fun fact, the Fuso actually comes across the map and gets into Bravo and the Tennessee gets into Alpha. Uh, that means they essentially cancel each other out. Uh, we had a 20-point lead, and they're not going to be able to do enough uh, because our guy got into the cap about the same time their guy did. We didn't really lose any points there. And then on top of that, he's going to finish it like a second before our guy does, so we're not going to lose any points there. Um, so at the end of the day, like these guys played it the right way, potentially, because it was so close... The Fuso knows he can't win this fight with the Tennessee. He would have seen the Tennessee was full health. He knows he can't win that fight. So trying to get the base, hoping that the Tennessee isn't able to get to the base fast enough and you could have given your points or your team a points lead. Because um, it only takes a few ticks. It's only It only takes like 10 to 15 seconds for that 20 points lead to disappear. So all he had to do is get into the base just a little sooner. But because the Tennessee went and beelined it straight for the base, he manages to avoid that altogether. And uh, we maintain our points lead. 30 seconds left in the match. These two aren't going to be able to spot one another. And uh, that's going to do it for this game. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this path to the Vanguard. Uh, this, like I said, is easily the best ship in this line. I prefer this over most other Tier 5 battleships, if not every other Tier 5 battleship. Uh, this is why I take this the Queen Elizabeth into a fight in ranked battles all the time just because it's a great ship uh, but as you can see game's over we we had a pretty solid game high caliber 124,000 damage got a citadel on a battleship which doesn't happen very often uh, especially at range like up close i can citadel fusos pretty reliably but uh, at range 2200 base xp not too shabby uh, new york not so much so if you like what i'm doing punch the like button leave a comment below subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and as always i will see you in the next video.